Hotel family. It's your brother Seti. Back at you again with this real fucking talk. Uh, today, I just really want to build with you on the origins of law and government. Now, we got to understand something when we dealing with law. And you hear me. And you hear me well. And don't you waver from this. The black man and the black woman that originated in Africa is the mothers and fathers of all divine law on this planet. Don't make no damn difference is it, if, if it's a law. Is it a divine law? Is it a righteous law? And even though we might abide by certain laws, because we are under siege, you understand what I'm saying? We are imprisoned, and so until we can do what we want to do, which we're going to do, we play our position and keep our eyes open, keep our ears open, keep our mouths closed. And watch. But the black man and woman is the original man and woman of the planet, fathers and mothers of all law and government. So, why do certain individuals who speak about law don't speak about the fact that Nubia, Taseti, Tanahisi, is the oldest documented government on the planet Earth. And that the 42 negative confessions of that black goddess, Ma'a, is the oldest system of law on the planet Earth. Now, if you establish that another man's law is what you're going to deal with, that's like saying, that what our ancestors put down ain't shit. That cracker law usurps they laws. You understand what I'm saying? You can sit here and spit the cracker law, but you can't go back and teach our babies when they were the lawmakers. That they established governments. We're not here just to, you know, abide by no laws. We are formulating laws for our people so that we can move into our own systems of government and rule our people with a divine and righteous law. Now you can spew law, but the question is, is it a divine law? Is it a righteous law? And just because we abide by law, based on the position that we are in, does not mean that we have to agree with it or even promote it. Now, when we dealing with this law of our ancestors, I'm going to bring something out to you, which many people can't bring out. I hope I can get it up there good for your family. This is the, the papyrus of Ani, who was a priest in ancient Egypt. And this particular papyrus was drawn up around 1600 BCE. And what I want you to know about this papyrus for all the Muslim, Jew, Christian, Moor, uh, uh, Jehovah Witness, a Mormon, you understand what I'm saying? Protestant, evangelist, whatever you may be. I ain't holding no cards on none of you because you're all eight up off our ancestors. That this is the original. This ain't no damn carbon copy. And none of them goddamn groups can bring out a manuscript that even come close to how ancient this papyrus is and it ain't even the most ancient. But for argument's sake, I brought it out here. Now what you do is, when you look at the top, these are nether roots. These are gods and goddesses. Now, if you count one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, there's two in this row. Two queens. 
That's Isis and Neptis. You can tell by the crown on her head. You understand what I'm saying? This right here is a saw. This right here is Ra. You understand what I'm saying? There again, that shoe right there. That's right there is Tefnu. And now I don't know all of them, but I gave you uh, 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 some particulars where you can go back and get the rest. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, and two back here. Twelve. This the jury system. This this the jury system that the cracker got in place right now. But these niggas can tell you about law, but they won't take you back here. They won't take you back here when you were the originator, black man and black woman. When you was a lawmaker, this is facts. This ain't no rambling. This ain't no emotion. And I'm supposed to have emotion. Not no peck of wood. There's a time and a season for all things. And like when you even when you look at a football team, you got many positions. And everybody not quarterbacking. Everybody not a running back. You understand? Well, everybody is not a lineman. A defensive or an offensive lineman. You got linebackers, defensive safeties, wide receivers. You need all of them to win that game. You even got a punt return, a punt kicker, a field goal kicker. You got various positions on the field. And this is symbolic also. Because if one could do it, you would just see one up there. Because, But because all of these Nataru got different properties that are necessary for the balance of the universe, that's why you see many. So just because you a goddamn coward and you can't step up, you understand what I'm saying? And there's a lot of my brothers out there that I see stepping up. And I want to give a mad fucking shout out to you motherfuckers out there. Because motherfuckers talking shit that it ain't no real soldiers out there. But that's a goddamn lie. And y'all brothers out there need to link. And I mean that. 2009, we moving in that position. We going to link. Because I've been getting a lot of uh, uh, vibes, a lot of good comments from a lot of brothers and sisters out there. I know I'm not alone. I know I'm not alone. I'm getting calls every damn day. I'm getting emails every damn day by the hundreds. Then everybody, a lot of people out there got more knowledge on subjects, certain subjects, than I got. And that's the way it's supposed to be. That's why you see many. Because certain people have come in and feel certain gaps that other people cannot feel. You understand what I'm saying? And I see that out there. There's a lot of brothers and sisters that was filling a whole lot of gaps for me. Came and gave me that information. And I say, damn. If we put all this together, it could be devastating. Now what you see down here is Tehuti. He is the sacred god of writing. The metal netter that you see right here. That's written in black. You understand what I'm saying? The color of divinity in Africa. He's writing it down. That's the so-called court reporter. You see right there, Anpu or which they call Anubis. He's checking that scale. He's going to give you a fair chance. And you, one thing you need to see is that the scales is balanced. But when you go in that Pecklewood system, you will notice that one scale is up, one scale is down. That's no justice. That is not justice. And then when you read the signs and the symbols, it lets you know before you even get there, you ain't going to get no goddamn justice. Give a damn if you know the cracker law, or if you don't, these crackers will never ever, and I want you to hear me, ever let a nigga who was his, was still his goddamn slave, he wiped his goddamn feet on your ass. Do you think that that man will allow you to usurp his fucking system? You, sir, his power? What did Dr. Clark tell you? The, the man in power will never teach the man out of power 
how to take his power from him. That will never happen. That cracker got fail safe switches in this system to always keep that power in his grasp. So you can forget about it. You better get off that goddamn bandwagon. It's like a lot of these motherfuckers use that peck of wood as a crutch. They, they can't get that peck of wood's titty out of their mouth. In the name of my ancestors, I am the Black Dragon. My subject today, kill the white people, well, that's just a title of a video. In fact, this talk, this conversation has nothing to do with killing the white people. However, because of the naive, perhaps ignorant, perhaps arrogant, selfish type of attitude many Caucasian people have, it may want and cause somebody to say, kill the white people. But buy my records first. <laughs> Remember that from Saturday Night Live, Eddie Murphy, they were singing this song, kill the white people. Oh, kill the right people, but buy my records first. <laughs> and I want to talk to the right people, to the racist Caucasian Americans. What brings me to this subject are two things. Point number one, I was watching the ceremony for the Freedom Award, Medal of Honor, some, something to that effect. And I saw President Obama place that medal around the neck of our sister, Maya Angelou, I think that's her name. I'm not really familiar with her. I know she's a poet, Maya Angelou, she's a poet. And Maya Angelou, she began to weep because she was. this was such an honor for her that this Medal of Freedom, the highest honor that a civilian can attain in this country, was placed around her neck. And she would later say, and this is what is so sickening to me, this 80-some-year-old woman, I feel so proud to be an American. How can any black person have the nerve, unless you are mentally dead, unless you are a zombie, to say that you are proud to have this metal around your neck, so-called freedom, when you come from a people that was denied freedom, denied right. And even at this time, you are given scraps. You're always begging for something. Always complaining about something. But you proud to have this piece of metal which gives us the illusion like we belong and we don't. But she's 80 years old. And the reason of why they put this metal or this, this chain around your neck Sister Angela, the reason why they put that chain around your neck is because you are a non-threat to them. You are an 80-some-year-old good slave. You've been a good slave for them. You write beautiful poetry that is non-threatening. You are a non-threatening black woman. And you take that same slave-like mentality and you influence other blacks so they become non-threatening. You are a, you have been for 80 some years a good slave so let me reward you with the medal of freedom 
Because I'm not going to give you real freedom. I'm just going to give you symbolism and put it around your neck. I'm so proud to believe I'm free. You will not see them give the Medal of Honor to our sister Khadija Farrakhan, the wife of Louis Farrakhan. I really doubt she would get this Medal of Freedom. There is no Medal of Freedom, even in even being a symbol to Harriet Tubman or our sister Fannie Lou Hamer. Fannie Lou Hamer will never get a Medal of Honor because that sister said, Look, you evil demons. I have become sick and tired of being sick and tired messing with y'all evil wicked butt. So she's not a good slave. I ain't gonna give her no Medal of Freedom because Fannie Lou Hamer know she's not free. And I'm not going to give a Medal of Honor to Harriet Tubman because that old Harriet Tubman helped free the slaves. So I'd rather give it to Maya Angelou who entertained her slave master with beautiful poetry and convinced the rest of the slaves don't worry, it's going to get better. These is nice people. One day when you 80 some years old, the president might put these chains that's on my mind. Maybe he'll put them chains as a medal and put it around your neck for being a good slave. They honored Sojourner Truth and don't get it twisted because Sojourner Truth was a fighter, but they give honor, I believe, in the rotunda of the Capitol to the first black woman, Sojourner Truth, because she echoed the mentality of one of the best slaves. She said, I'm so happy that this white man got us out of Africa so I could be introduced to my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. You, you, sojourner truth, because of your accepting the truth of Jesus Christ, becoming a good, good slave, I'm going to put you in the rotunda. Here, here's your medal of honor. Here's your illusion of freedom. Because their version of Jesus Christ, their version of Christianity, Makes not, makes you a slave. However, if you do understand Christianity, like Nat Turner, because Nat Turner was a preacher. He understood the Bible and it made him rebel. But see, they're not interested in that type of mentality. Don't teach Jesus the way he really needs to be taught to a people that's oppressed. Let us write some poems and let us turn the other cheek and smile and hope one day that the slave master instead of putting the chains on your wrists and on your legs one day when you're 80 some years old the president will take the chain and put it around your neck and you'll be so happy loud and loud and loud and I free. I'm so proud to be an American. Then if you're proud to be an American, you're proud to be an enslaver. You're proud to be those who committed genocide on the native people here. Genocide on the black people. Genocide on some of their own people. Murder, raping, and robbing everywhere they go. You're proud of being part of evil. Given the illusion of being an angel. And this is, I have come to the part that really 
pissed me off. Because you have these racist Caucasians, the ones that try to be undercover, the ones that try to be friendly towards us. They have the nerve to tell me one of these things, one of these snakes in the grass. You're going to tell me, you, sir, you, sir, are racist. Your ancestors would be shame of you. Now you got me really mad. How would my ancestors be shame of me? You think they want to be a slave? You think they didn't want to fight back? You think they sitting around wishing the blessings of America after what you did to them? They come on the hold of ships, sleeping in their own feces, being beaten, made to work sun up to sundown, our women raped, you raped my grandmothers, castrated my grandfathers, you treated them like animals, the same way that you would buy a pig or a cow or a horse on the block, that's how my people have been sold. And even today, you even continue to, your police officers, shoot us down in the street, just a five homicide. We are still denied proper housing and employment in, in all the facets, poor education. A sister just recently, she's going to be a, a convicted felon because she wants to try to improve the education of her children. Why do you have to go through all that? Y'all some evil thing and you, you really think black folks are stupid. Now maybe because of the, of these chains, this medal of freedom of Maya Angelou, maybe she's impressed by you. But I'm not impressed because I see who you are. You are a wicked demon. How dare you come to me and tell me, suggest to me that my ancestors want me to love you. After what you've done to them. You must think I'm a damn fool. Because if your father, your mother, your sister, your aunt, if they went through the same thing, I know that you would not be coming to us talking about I love you. Now the difference between you and I, I will take in consideration that that was those who were really involved in those things are long dead. That's true. But that don't make me forget because you have children. Are you like your father, the devil? Many of you are. If we are still having problems with racism in this nation, it takes a majority to pull that off. Because if it was the minority, it wouldn't be an issue. But you are like your father's either directly or indirectly. Some of y'all Caucasian people, you don't even realize you racist. You've been trained that way. That's why you can't listen to a black man. When a black man trying to tell you something, you think I'm supposed to take your advice because in your mind, I'm still your slave. Well, sorry to tell you, I'm not your damn slave. That was a long time ago. That was not a, that was not a long time ago. The last physical slave died in 1949. He left record in the Library of Congress. He don't like you. You humiliated him. He talked about being a slave. It was not beautiful. You don't think he's gonna come and tell me, oh, they were some angels. 1949, that was not a long time ago. The last child of a slave died in 2001. That really was not long ago. If you want me to forget the suffering of my people and love you, even though you continue the ways of your fathers, you need to forget Pearl Harbor. All those that died in Pearl Harbor, all those who died in 9-11, all those who died in the Holocaust, 
the recent shooting of Gabriel Gifford. That's in the past now. I could care less. If you don't give a damn about my people in the hold of a ship, laying in their feces, in their urine, I don't give a damn about you either. And don't come to me and smile. If you really gave a damn about me, you wouldn't do Oh, that pisses me off. You have a lot of nerve. You insult the intelligence of black people. You think that we're really stupid. That is because you are used to black folks being like Maya Angelou. Putting a chain around her neck. Because it's symbolism that there's a chain of her mind. Her mind is chained up. She's still a slave. So you expect me and every black person. You, you expect all of us to be like Maya Angelou. I'm not your slave. How can you have the nerve to come to anybody and tell them, forget the hurt and the pain of their mothers and fathers? I don't care how long ago it was. You don't forget the pain and the suffering of your fathers. They tell you in history every day. And you don't forget. Because those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. And you want us to forget the past because you enjoy us being in a slave-like condition so you can take advantage of everything with your greedy ass. You want all the jobs, don't you, white man? You want all the jobs. You want all the television space. You want everything. You want it all. And even though the black people here, Dr. What's her name? Maya Angelou. She don't mind you hoarding everything. As long as she has her chain. And she can cry. And her tears should not be tears of joy. Cause this chain put around her neck. It should be chain. It should be tears of sadness. Because that's the excla exclamation point that there's no doubt. You my damn slave. I've never seen nobody happy. Tears coming out of their eyes. Because they are slave. Because they, these dark European Negroes like Maya Angelou, she really believes she's free. But what do you expect? But they, let me, let me tell you this. Stupid Caucasian folks. Those like her are dying away. And being replaced with black minds and mentalities. 